Hello and welcome to a beautiful, sunny, gorgeous day in Calgary. Um, we are having, I think, a little touch of spring between our snow showers. So it, it's turning out to be a fairly decent day today and I'm hoping everybody is able to enjoy it. So I'm welcoming everyone to another version of Wacky Wednesday at my sewing room. So I'm glad to see we've got some viewers tuning in. So hi, Anne. It's very lovely that people are joining us already. It's a beautiful day. Hi, Nancy. I just hope that no one's missing out on the beautiful uh, summer sunshine just to watch but thank you if you are and thank you to those who will be watching us later today on on repeat so this is awesome so uh hi esther so as i say welcome to wacky wednesday at my sewing room and we have another exciting show for you today right robin hi robin yes yeah, so lovely of you to join me so just a quick shout out to all those people that uh, left me a message or stopped in at the store and said hello. So hi to Tina B, Denise B, Ruth C, Sandy A, Ann L, Chris L, Rose L. I think we have an L theme going on here. Ann S, who is back with us today, uh, Lana T, Loanne F., Nancy C, who's back, Geraldine M, Maureen C, Robin, who's back, Carol G, hi Carol, Rita D, Teresa W, Val S, Carol and Paul, Mary Z, Glenda and Mike, Jean and Maui Jim. Yes, so thank you all for joining us last week and this week um, for your participation in either Facebook or YouTube, giving us those big thumbs up or the big loves. We really appreciate it. Thank you. I even saw someone share, made a share. I think that is so awesome. Thank you so much. All right, so today we have a project that we're working on. Hi, Roselle. We are going to finally let that chicken go. That chicken has been with us for three weeks. This is his last week. Poor old chicken. This is his last week. He's a leaving us. So I want to uh, thank you all for having watched us as we had a, a chicken. We had chicken soup. We made chicken pot pie. We had a spring chicken. We had a little chick. It's been a busy chicken month. Anyway, so this time I am doing another one of the Sandy Simple Sewing Presents a My Sewing Room Exclusive. So I'm going to be showing you how to make the following project. Are you ready? It's called Go Ahead, Cross the Road. There it is. Go ahead. Cross the road. We are going to get rid of this chicken. So I'd like to welcome you. I am Sandy. I am the crossing guard. <coughs> Sorry, I hope that doesn't blow all everybody's ears out. Hi, Anne. I hope I didn't scare everybody. But we are going to get this chicken across the road today and let him get on his way. So, of course, you know, there has to be a reason. Why did the chicken cross the road? Well, to get to the other side. And I see in my sample, we got chickens going both ways. Cross the road and back again. All right, so let's get started with our project called Go Ahead, Cross the Road. Let's look at all of the different things that we are going to need for our project. Are you ready? All right, so... Of course, you need your sewing machine and, a, and you need some feet. And for this one, I used my quarter inch piecing foot. I used my applique foot, which is the number 20 on Bernina. And I used my walking foot. So those are the feet you need along with your sewing machine. Of course, you need your trusty mat, your ruler, rotary cutter, you need some scissors, 
and I've got a couple of pairs um, for cutting things out for snipping things we are also going to have to have our marker because we have to do some marking we are going to need an applique, applique pressing fee sheet because we're going to try not to stick anything to the iron today uh, we need our pins we need an assortment of beautiful colored threads to do our applique and of course to finish everything off uh, we are going to need some cotton fusible interfacing for the back of your main project so when you do your decorative stitching or your satin stitch it has something to hang on to we're also going to need wonder under for that applique and i use this time fusible fleece you can use binding but i use fusible fleece because i can just iron it on once i've got it all together of course then i sprayed my project with a 505 and then after it was done, I did all the binding. Bye, Ashley. I see you're crossing the road. All right. Excellent. So those, those are all of the wonderful things that we are going to use in our project today. All right. Other things that we're going to need, of course, come in the kit. And Miss Dawn has made a lovely kit. It says... Go ahead, cross the road, mini quilt kit. Now this includes the pattern, the fabric for the quilt top, and binding. So you will need to have a backing fabric and fusible web. Our binding's actually in there, so you don't need that, but you need a backing and you need the fusible web. Um, and the fabric in the kits may vary from sample and pattern. I'll have to tell her that, that you really don't, because she's providing the, the binding. The kit itself with the pattern and everything is $34.99, and it is adorable. You can make this into um, single ones, for like a placemat you could put more than these two together and make a table runner this is just a little wall hanging you can make it into a mug rug something like that it's quite versatile and it, and it's adorable and the only way to get the really cute pattern of course is to buy a kit because the pattern comes in it and then you can uh, purchase other fabrics to make more and of course we have other fabrics we use Lori Holt fabrics so we have all of the lovely Holt, Holt, Lori Holt line of fabrics in the store so you can use those to make more of these kits when you're ready all right so some of the fabrics that uh, she gave us she gave us a real variety but you need for sure you need um, the road to cross. You need the sky. And I've got a couple of different ones. This is the one that's provided in the kit. It is a cross. And the bottom one is a little bit of a plaid. So that would be your sky and your road. Now, with the sky and the road, they tell you what to cut out. And then I have on the back fused this uh you can use shape flex it's a woven 100 percent cotton um, fusible interfacing on both pieces so then you can sew them together to make a block and that's your starting base point so you get road material you also get the first binding or first binding sorry border maybe that's what she meant to say in there you get border fabric and you get a second border fabric and you get a well a third border fabric and the third border fabric which is red so you do the brown the red and then the colored is also used as the binding on the outside so lots of different uh, borders and binding colors along with the road and the sky material and then <laughs> she gives us all sorts of different colors to pick from because of course we're going to cut this chicken out out of many parts so we need all sorts of different colors you kind of mix it up, mix it up however you want to do it you have lots of different fabrics to make all the chicken parts yes we're making chicken parts all right so the chicken parts they give you a picture of all the different parts 
And so what I did was to take my um, vinyl, my plastic, and I traced these onto the plastic because these ones, it says to cut two, one has to be a reverse of the other. So you need to be able to flip it. Um, I found you could probably cut the paper pieces, but they won't hold up as well. I made them out of template plastic, which makes them a little sturdier. And then you can flip them and you do one going one way one going the other way so you do that for all of the little chicken body parts you make a template plastic for his wings his nose his beak his head and i dropped his foot hang on have to get down and get that foot off the floor it fell there we go before we step on his toes so you'd make a template plastic copy of each of these and then you have to decide what fabrics you want these to be out of. So you have, whoop, 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 whoop. You've got so much to select from. You could make a fun brown body on the chicken. You could make his wings out of the yellow. You can make his head green. You can make his neck pink. Maybe you want to. I did, however, use the comb and the beak in red. And then his little legs can be whatever other color you like. So you get to select. What you're going to do with this fabric, though, is to put some wonder under on the back side of it. And then you're going to trace, of course, your pattern piece out and cut it and i have one of those ready for us so we can have a look at what that looks like oh my we have all sorts of pieces here we got chicken legs we got chicken everything so i have already cut out let me move some things out of the way so you can see them i've already made a block and this is where they start you with is a block and they ask you to put down your road and your sky and then put your first border on now i've only done one the the piece that i did before you had two but this is one so i can show you how we did it so and i put uh fusible fleece on the back or not fusible fleece I'm sorry fusible interfacing so and ironed it on so that you've got something to stitch on so there's our background then you take all your lovely pieces that you have put wonder under on and traced I'd lost him he's disappeared where'd he go I lost his neck there he is here's his neck I have traced him I put Wonder Under on and I traced out the pattern. So now I am going to take my big scissors and I'm just going to cut it out. Now one thing when you're putting your Wonder Under on, use that applique pressing sheet so you don't do what I did and stick it to your iron, which doesn't work so good. You have to get the iron cleaner and get cleaning. So just be very careful. And once you've got these all ironed out with the wonder under on the back, let them cool. I've left mine overnight just because I find they do not um, separate well if they're hot. Okay, so let's score the back of this wonder under. I'm just trying to find a place to put my papers. Score this guy with your pin and then the wonder under just the backing of it just peels off so now we've got a gluey part all right so let's build our chicken are you ready to build a chicken all right so i have all my pieces cut out now following the directions on the pattern when i look at it this guy started about just over halfway where the road met the sky and his little feathers on the end hung over the first border so that would be where i would start positioning this now the wing according to the picture goes in the opposite direction of the tail and it just kind of floats over top of that little wing part there then of course let's put our feet on it seems that i've lost a foot 
Oh no. You know, you try and give a leg up to someone and next thing you know, you're missing a leg. I'm going to have to look for his other leg. This is his neck. And that just kind of fits over the very edge, kind of meets at the corner. His little head goes on top. And then you put his comb on. And you put his little beak. And then at this point, we're going to iron those all into place. But I'm missing a leg, so just give me a second while I find his missing leg, because I don't want to put him together without his leg. He'll be a one-legged chicken, and that would be awful. So as I'm looking, I have to tell you a little story. If you remember early on in the chicken projects, I made a lovely chicken candle mat. It was called Little Chick's Candle Mat. And I was so proud of it because I thought I'd done such a nice job. And I put it in my living room on my coffee table. And I put a little candle on it. And I thought, that looks really nice. Well, it just so happened that we were dog sitting. And, of course, I never thought about it. I puppy-proofed the house as best I could. But lo and behold, I heard there was a quietness. One of the dogs had gone upstairs to the bed to sleep. The other one, I didn't know where he was. So I started tracking down the puppy. Well, sure enough, I get into the living room. And I don't know how he did it, but he managed to take the little candle mat off the coffee table. And he, he ate it. He didn't move the candle, but he ate half of the co coffee mat, uh, candle mat. So I came to work and I was telling everyone my sad story of my little coffee mat. And of course, my friend Betty is such a sweetheart. She looks at me and she says, hmm, must have tasted like chicken. So anyways, then we laughed. We thought it was hilarious. He'd eaten up the chicken placemat. Anyways, I'm not able to see my... Oh, there's my other leg. Um, so poor old dog didn't get into trouble. What are you going to say to the puppy who's only a year old that loves to eat everything? So we, <laughs> we just uh, moved on with our lives, right? All right, so let's move this back now. We have our little chicken all laid out and ready for the pressing. Okay, here we go. There he is. He's got both feet now, which is a bonus. He's got his chicken wing. He's got his neck, his face, his hair, his comb, his little beak. Are you ready? Then we just press him. And we count. I like counting one, two, three four, five, before I move the iron on to the next piece so that I make sure that it's getting well stuck down. So that's our first part. So we've built our block, put a little first border on. We've wonder under the back side of our fabric. We've made the shapes, cut them out, and now we are ironing them on. I think my iron's dying. Oh yeah, no, it's going, it's going. Anyway, so we'll just give it a couple minutes as we go. So as we do this, I want to, to, to tell me, this is an Alberta joke. These are for the chickens that live in Alberta. So why did the chicken cross the road? To show the gophers it could be done. So that is a bad, very bad Alberta joke because I have seen too many gophers lose their lives on the road, whereas I've never seen a chicken dead on the road. So that's good. Oh, we have company. What is our company looking for? Buttons, Buttons in a bottle. Oh, like yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. I don't think my iron is quite hot enough for this. I thought it was, but it's not. Things are not sticking that well. We'll have to get us a, a warmer, a warmer iron. I'll just leave that sit on there for a minute. Anyway, so that's the sad story of the gopher and the sad story of my poor little chicken mat. All right. Anyways, there, it's almost done. We've almost got them pressed enough. And you do that for both appliques of the chicken and then of course you're going to put your borders on so ooh, I keep dropping my chicken you poor chicken so 
You can see on here the, the road, then the sky. We put that first brown border on, and then we did the chicken. And once you've got this first part finished, you need to use some um, DMC floss and make a little eye. Well, and of course, remember, I made really cute chick eyes on that poor little candle mat that is no more. But uh, let me show you what my little eyeballs look like over here. So I just took the black and just kind of, oh, I got it dirty, dusty, and just kind of um, made the little stitches in a row just to indicate the eye. And you do that before you do any of the other quilting or anything else. Okay, so now you've got your piece all put together. You put the eye on it. Now you have to do your bo other borders. Okay, so we are doing more borders. So you, this one then bordered with the red. And then we used one of the very colorful borders for the outside so it looks really pretty. The back fabric, as it turned out, is just a beige with like little crisscrosses on it. It kind of looks like chicken scratch. So I thought that was quite good. But I used fusible fleece and ironed it onto my back my um, back fabric backing and then I sprayed everything and put laid down my front part and then I started to stitch okay and of course this is where all of those colorful threads come in because you can pick a thread to match every one of these lovely lovely colors and of course for the legs I used a nice brown uh, Body-wise, for the darker body, I used the navy. For the gold neck, I used the gold. Uh, I used pink for his pink wings. And I used a nice uh, teal color for his head. And, of course, red for all of his uh, chicken parts, his red net and everything. I've got so many pretty colors. I just had so much fun picking thread out and using thread. It was a delight. Anyways, this one I just stitched uh, with just a straight stitch. But you could do um, blanket stitch. You can do satin stitch. You could do a triple stitch. You could do any kind of a decorative stitch. I just thought the straight stitch looked quite cool. And then we stitched him down. For the quilting part... I just actually went around the boxes. Um, I didn't think the chicken needed any extra embellishment. I just uh, went around him and I went around the block. And that gave us our little chicken. And then, of course, I put the binding on. And that finished off our lovely little quilt. All right. Okay, enough work, you guys. Enough work. We need to tell some jokes. Yes, we do, because you can't get away without telling some more chicken jokes. But I need to, help, you know, we need to, to tell a few more. Okay, so why did the chicken run across the road? To get to the other side faster. Yeah, it's a speedy chicken, I tell you. It's a speedy, speedy chicken. All right. Why did the baby chick cross the road? because it was take your child to work day. My favorite, are you ready for it? Everybody ready for this? Why did the rubber chicken cross the road? To stretch her legs. Yes. So why did the dinosaur cross the road? Because chickens didn't exist back then. Why did the turkey cross the road? To prove he wasn't a chicken. I need to put a boom or a soundtrack or a laugh or something. So why did the gum cross the road? Because it was stuck on the chicken's foot. Why did the goldfish cross the road? Because the chicken was on holidays. Uh, now, I got to tell you. The chickens actually have stopped crossing the road. 
you understand that they've never been run over or whatever but they decided they'd stop because of something that came into to view not too long ago the chicken didn't cross the road because he called a uber and that's how he got home but let us help that little chicken cross the road are you ready everybody stop Let's motion the chicken across the road. Are you ready? Here he goes. Ba -da -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum and there goes the chicken. He says, bye, buckos. I have to leave now. Bye. And we have successfully walked the chicken across the road and he is gone. So I can let you know, everybody, there won't be any more chicken jokes for a while. No. As a matter of fact, no, there's no more chicken jokes. But I am back on Friday. Yes, Freaky Friday. Miss Lee is away. So we have Freaky Friday ourselves. Um, so Shirley and Sandy Locke Holmes will be visiting you for the case of the missing person. So that might be kind of interesting to tune in for. All right. I hope you enjoyed making a little chicken. Go ahead, cross the road little uh, table you can use it as a table runner or a little wall quilt so I just want to tell you about a few things coming up next week is April already and remember, oh yeah and April 1st is Friday April Fool's Day Ooh, I should have some good jokes for that day okay so anyways on April 5th, which is Wednesday, Brother has an a new owner's embroidery class. So if you've purchased your machine through us, that class is free of charge. It is that one day, 10 to 4. Uh, there is a kit fee of $25. So if you have not done your new owner's class for Brother, please join us. Uh, for these, just call into the store and get signed up, okay? Next week on Thursday, April 6th, we have the first of the Quilting First Class classes. Now, Quilting First Class is four um, consecutive Thursdays. So 6, 13, 20, and 27th of April. There's four classes. They go from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And they're $99 plus tax. All right. Following week. Tuesday, April 11th, for all of you people who are doing Hoop Sisters Navigator Quilt. That will be five classes, five different months. Um, they start 10 a.m. and go till noon. It's $375 plus tax. You need the pattern and you need to pick out your fabric. And we have a excellent fabric picking team we have ashley dawn and a few others who are helping to pick fabric for the hoop sisters navigator so if you're interested in that get signed up and come on in and get ready for that and i have to make a little shout out here because there's been some more people that came on carol D, Annette, W, Teresa, S, Rita, D, and she says i quack that i just quack her up I think that's so funny. Yes. Anyways, so the next one after that, um, that was the Tuesday. On the Wednesday of that week, April 12th, there is a Bernina New Owners Embroidery class. That goes from 10 a.m. to 4. And again, it's free with purchase of your machine. Uh, that one has a $55 uh, kit fee. If you haven't purchased your machine but want to do either the brother or the Bernina embroidery you certainly may it just costs money that's all all right so that's that and the last thing for that week so we're working two weeks and head here Friday April 14th Barbara's got another long arm certification for renting it goes from noon until four and it's $150 plus tax so those are the upcoming classes in the next three weeks so I hope you've enjoyed making go ahead cross the road it's available this will be up in the wall in the store and the kit will be available to you and 
thank you ever so much for signing in and uh, helping me cross get that chicken across the road. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we will see S Sandy Locke and Shirley Holmes. We'll see you on Friday if you're interested in tuning in at 4.15 on Friday. All right. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the beautiful weather. Spring really, truly is just around the corner, we hope.